April 7th, 1994. Flight Federal Express 705 is scheduled to take off from Memphis International Airport to San Jose International Airport. The aircraft is an eight-year-old McDonnell Douglas DC-10-30F. A cargo jet, the plane will be transporting electronic equipment across the United States. On today's flight, there will be three pilots in control and one Federal Express employee riding along in the jump seat, making a total of four people on board the flight. The fourth passenger, Auburn Calloway, age 42, is a formal naval pilot and martial arts expert a second officer for the airline who's facing possible termination for falsifying flight hours. Callaway has boarded the aircraft with a guitar case. Inside, he has stashed two claw hammers, two club hammers, a spear gun, and a knife. Anxiously, he awaits for the other pilots to arrive as he preps himself to follow through with his plan. The threat of termination has pushed Callaway to the unthinkable. He intends to commit suicide during the flight by hijacking the plane and deliberately crashing the aircraft. He hopes to make the crash look like an accident to ensure his family receives the max life insurance payout, $2.5 million. He plans to kill the crew via blunt force trauma. This is to ensure their injuries are congruent with an air crash. As Callaway finishes pre-flight checks, flight engineer Andrew Peterson, 39, boards the aircraft. They exchange hellos and Peterson takes his seat at the flight engineer panel. As Peterson begins his checks of the instruments, he notices the breaker for the cockpit voice recorder had been switched off. He resets it. He then leaves the aircraft to continue his visual inspection outside the aircraft. Moments later, Captain David Sanders, 49, and Captain Jim Tucker, 42, enter the aircraft. The men exchange hellos and prepare for the flight ahead. When flight engineer Peterson returns after his visual inspection, he notices the cockpit voice recorder is off again. He turns it back on and watches to see if the circuit will trip again. None of the crew know Callaway or the reason he is on the flight. However, it is common for employees to fly back to different hubs if there's room on the flight. Cleared for takeoff, the flight takes off as normal with Captain Tucker in command. As the flight climbs through flight level 180, Callaway has opened his guitar case and grabbed two of his hammers. He takes a swing and connects multiple blows to the flight engineer Peterson's skull before Captain Tucker could react. He feels the crushing pain of a blow to his temple. Both pilots are hit so hard, fragments of their skulls enter their brain. Immediately, they are incapacitated and unable to react. As Captain Sanders attempts to fight off he too receives the hammer to his skull. Callaway then retrieves his spear gun and points it at the crew. Using what strength they have left, Peterson manages to grab the tip of the gun while Sanders tackles him. The pilot in control of the flight uses oscillating motions and a dramatic pitch angle to keep Callaway off his feet. The aircraft climbs at a 15 degree angle, then dives as it rolls off to the left. The crew struggle with all their might rolling across the cabin, they managed to restrain Callaway long enough for the flight to be vectored back to land. The aircraft touches down and the crew is met by first responders on the runway. Medics and law enforcement are forced to climb into the aircraft using the emergency slides and emergency ladders. Safely on the ground, the ordeal is not over. The men still have to survive their injuries. The left side of Tucker's skull was severely fractured, causing motor control problems in his right arm and right leg. Callaway managed to dislocate Tucker's jaw, attempted to gouge out one of his eyes, and stabbed him in his right arm. Sanders suffered deep gashes on his head, and doctors had to sew his right ear back in place. Flight engineer Peterson's skull was fractured and his temporal artery severed. As the investigation unfolds, a notice found on the aircraft. In the 1994 Associated Press article, an FBI affidavit filed with the request to search Callaway's Memphis apartment says a note was found aboard the plane. The content of this note indicates the high potential that Callaway planned to commit suicide on the flight and also indicate that Callaway may have made financial arrangements to take care of dependents and family members in connection with his planned suicide. Probably one of the bloodiest scenes that I've seen in my years with the fire department. The three-man crew and one other person were aboard, an off-duty FedEx pilot, Auburn Callaway, who was just along for the ride. I just asking. I guess out of my own curiosity, you know, why did you do something like this? And uh, you can just kind of tell when somebody's thinking, and he kind of had that look on his face, and after 15 or 20 seconds, he said, I guess it just went crazy.
Sadly, due to the severity of the head injuries, David Sanders, Jim Tucker, and Andy Peterson were permanently grounded and never flew again. Auburn Calloway was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility for parole. He is currently serving his time in a California state prison. It is important to point out that changes have been made in the wake of Flight 705. For instance, crew's baggage is thoroughly screened before they enter the airport. As well, employees, if terminated, are immediately to turn over their badges and credentials to gain access to the airport. Now, on one hand, I could see the sentiment of being an endearing father, wanting to provide for his son and provide for his family above all others. And and though that sentiment is is you know, admirable at what cost. Um, you do not have the right to take the lives of others and, and destroy other families, nor do you have the right to end other people's careers. And it's very sad and very selfish. And this is an example where sometimes people get stuck in their mind and they get stuck in their emotions that this is forever, that there's, there's no way out, that I'm trapped, that if I lose my career as a pilot, there's no hope for me, there's nothing else I could do. And that's simply not the case. One of my therapists have told me, never to make permanent decisions based on temporary feelings. And that's just it, guys. Feelings are temporary. As happy as you've ever been in your entire life and as sad as you've ever been. Those are all fleeting. Emotions are fleeting. And there's ebbs and flows to life and ebbs and flows to emotions. And sadly, Calloway was in a moment that he believed that that moment would last forever. Believe it or not, Callaway is not the only disgruntled employee who has used an aircraft to commit a crime. In fact, our next air crash investigation true crime story that we're going to talk about is another disgruntled employee who was successful in downing his aircraft. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this series. It's been a lot of fun um, to marry true crime and aviation, which I love both. And it's been a lot of fun to uh, see you guys support um, the different types of things that I talk about on my channel. I also want to point out that my Twitter, my main account, my Twitter, my at Touch the Resin Stone account has been locked. I cannot gain access to it. I cannot get into it for the life of me. So if you could be so kind and at me and um, at Twitter, Twitter. Hopefully we can get that unlocked for me. But I do have in the meantime, a temporary second account that is going to be T Resin Stone. So uh, definitely follow me there as well. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I look forward to seeing you all in my next one. Until next time. Bye bye.